Hello, and welcome back again to Archaeology 101. In today's topic, we'll be looking at an evolutionary anomaly, Homo floresiensis, or its pseudonym, the Hobbit. A curious being, to be sure, and it is still contested on its legitimacy by some academics since its discovery in 2003. However, this human species has been established under the genus Homo, and could well be a distant ancestral relation of ours. The Hobbits were found on the island of Flores, Indonesia, and thought to have existed up to 18,000 years ago. What is unusual is that geographically it is 500 kilometers beyond the range of Homo erectus, a range which can perhaps only be achieved via boat. However, dating of stone tools from around 800,000 years ago on the island may contest this, as it coincides with movement of other Homo species such as erectus out of Africa. No other species but sapiens is thought to have boat technology, which has stumped the academic world. It is possible, however, that ancestors of Floresiensis arrived on natural rafts made up of vegetation, which have been known to travel great distances in Asia, especially when aided by tsunami tides. The initial discovery was made in the Langbua cave, where a male individual, about a metre tall with a cranial capacity of only 400cc, was discovered. This brain sign is not dissimilar to a chimp, and this is a marked decrease from the other species of Homo, who were already showing significant increase in their cranial capacity, such as Erectus who had achieved a cranial capacity of 900cc. Indeed, sceptics of this species claim that the first individual was subject to a condition such as microcephaly, which is a birth defect causing a very small shrunken head. The remains were damaged by a sceptic's attempt at replicating the bones, marring future examinations to an extent. However, other fossils were later identified and displayed very similar bone proportions and dated to as early as 95,000 years ago. Although it had small stature, the hobbit bones were thick, representing a pre-homo likeness. Indeed, its wrist bones are demonstrated to be more akin to an australopithecine, such as Afarensis or Garhi, than of an actual homo species. The theory behind the small stature of the hobbit is a process known as island dwarfing. Island mammal populations are known to reduce their size under isolated conditions. An excellent example being the Wrangell Island mammoths, which were the last mammoth population on Earth. Isolated on their Arctic island, their size decreased and existed up to 2000 BC before perhaps being hunted to extinction. However, new evidence has refuted island dwarfing, claiming that Floresiensis first had an ancestor who evolved in Africa from a species such as Homo habilis, and then eventually migrated to Indonesia, where they then became what they are as we know them. The hobbits, despite their small brain size, were associated with the production of stone tools, the hunting of an elephant species known as Stegodon, and there is some evidence that they also used fire, but there is ambiguity whether the fire was naturally created, or if they were actually capable of creating it themselves. The small brain size certainly did shock the archaeological community, and there are many who would argue against Floresiensis being capable of hunting or advanced tool making, attributing these sort of attributes to a larger brain human, as it would mean that brain size has less of an impact on the ability to create fire tools, etc., which so many of the big names in archaeology have claimed lays down the foundations of being human, that this big brain actually allows us to do something, and I think they fear that it might cheapen this to an extent. I think this was an overall positive experience for the archaeological community, however, as we need to be reminded that all of what we do is mainly theory, and we need to be very flexible and be able to adapt to new discoveries all the time, which I think some of the older, m more well-established ideas n need to be become more plastic. The dating of the few remains we have of the Hobbits only extend to 18,000 years ago, which could imply that this is how far chronologically Floresiensis got. They may have died out due to volcanic activity from volcanoes such as Mount Toba, which is known to have erupted some time ago, and finished by new sapien settlers, either directly or indirectly through the consumptions of its food resources, for example, and causing the extinction of an already stressed population. As an interesting side note, island folklore claim that small human-like creatures who ate children, known as Ibogogo, exist upon the island, and there has been a connection made by anthropologists that the folklore is a reference to the Floresiensis, and some people would even have you believe that Floresiensis still exists in hiding. I hope I have shed light on this mysterious and elusive species. As they are relatively new, and evidence is sparse, there isn't as much knowledge of it as it is to the African contemporaries. No doubt there are more surprises in store from the Hobbits, 
and definitely from previously unknown species which we are yet to discover. From what we have of Floresiensis, it had a small brain, it had a thick, maybe slightly primitive body, may I use that word, but it certainly could well have been able to create fire, use stone tools, and hunt little elephants, which is pretty damn cool. I will see you next time on Archaeology 101, thank you very much for watching.